Now let's head to the Edgewater Hotel and meet up with Steve Brightlow from the Building Trades to hear how the Big Step Training Program is working with the developer and contractors on this construction project. Well, Steve, it's finally upon us, the Edgewater Hotel project, and what an undertaking. I bet you're happy to see it under construction. Yeah, it's almost surreal. After all the years of working on getting this project approved, to see it really coming out of the ground, up 13 floors, and just you can really see it taking shape, and it's gonna be a tremendous project. And just looking around, even at this stage, there's a lot of different trades involved. Yeah, there's various trades here now. There's uh, plumbers, electricians, most of the basic trades are here from iron workers, cement finishers, operators. Many of the trades are engaging as the concrete floors get poured. Once those get done, more and more mechanicals and numbers of employees doing the mechanical fillings. And you know, as I look over there, that's obviously brand new, but I know you and I have talked, they're actually blending it with the older buildings as well. It's gotta be challenging for all the trades. Yeah, it's a fairly unique challenge to have this much of an undertaking of, of you know two tremendous projects in their own, but they're all combined with one with another project from a different generation in the middle. So we have a 40s building, a 70s building, and a brand new building, and they're all gonna be coordinated to blend together and look nice, and it's gonna be a great piece for the city going forward. Sure, the end result's gonna be spectacular, state-of-the-art, it's gonna be, I'd venture to say, iconic for the city of Madison right here on the shores of Lake Mendota. But do you find, I mean, you can speak for the plumbers, is it challenging when you have to come into a structure like this, 1940s era building? No, there is definitely more challenges working with the old. Everybody appreciates the history of things, but it does limit some of the options you have. You still have the old framework, can't have quite the modern size shape in rooms. So with the new structure, it's a lot more wide open to what you can do and fit stuff in. And it's just going to be more easy to modernize the new part than working with the old and the lower ceilings and everything else. Now, to get to this stage, obviously, it took an awful lot. And there's a lot that people don't realize that was going on behind the scenes and still is. Well, this project's been in the works for years, trying to get approval. A very unique thing about this developer, as part of their approval process in getting this project undergoing was they put in place what's called the Community Workforce Agreement. And part of that agreement is we have targeted populations. We're trying to get more people from the community on the project. And it was part of the original agreement with the city to have that. The city pulled their public funding from it, but the developer's taken it upon himself to live up to his commitments of enacting community workforce agreement. And all the construction trades and trade unions are working together to help meet those goals. That's awesome to see a private developer keep his word, so to speak, and really for the better good of the community, because we're talking about putting local people to work, getting them involved. These people might not have another opportunity to get involved in the construction trades, and not only on this project, but as I understand it, as I've learned earlier in the show, really get their foot in the door in a good, solid career in the construction field. That's true, Stu. And this project has goals of getting more and more people into the trade. And what we've done very recently, we've actually developed a new relationship with a group called WRTV Big Step, working with local CBOs called the START Program and others that are going to help recruit those folks into this project and start their careers. Well, it's going to be great for those folks, great for the community as a whole. Can we go over to that building and take a bird's eye view, look down in that big hole over there and see what your plumbers are up to? I love to. I'm excited to see what they're up to as well. Wow, Steve, this is a pretty spectacular hole in the ground. I can see some soil nailing to stabilize the soil over there. What is that concrete wall over there? That's actually the foundation of the National Guardian Life Building. And then the rest of the hole is the parking structure that's going to tie the three Edgewater buildings together. And it's also going to be tied together with NGL. And it'll be one big parking structure. Wow, that's a great case in point of the partnership. Just one of them that was needed to create this project. Now, this is a very crucial and intense development to, to get approved. And then now it's coming out of the ground. And it's going really well. And it's great to see it all being coordinated. Well, as I look down there, I don't see a whole lot of plumbing because it's getting buried already. But I do see some, uh, looks like, waistlines over there. Yeah, well, we're at the very bottom of the project here, and it's under a parking structure. Not a lot of plumbing in there, but they got one of the first uh, lower level floors poured now. There's some plumbing under there, be some electrical coming. So now we're just starting to come out of the ground. As it goes up, there'll be roof trains and other things on there. So the plumbing and all the other mechanicals will start to come in as we go. Fair to say, plumbers are there at the beginning and there at the end. Yep, from the sewers to setting fixtures in the bathrooms. Well, you know, throughout today's show, we've been talking about the WRTP Big Step Community Workforce, trying to get people who otherwise didn't have the opportunity to get into the trades. And when I look at a project of this magnitude, it seems to me you really need this in order to get people into the trades that otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to. 
Well, this is a great project for getting into the trades. It's a big project, it's very complex. There's gonna be hundreds of construction workers on here. So we always try to recruit women and minorities into the trades and hats off to the developer for actually having a workforce agreement for the project that has target goals and target populations of trying to recruit people into the trades so that we can keep the skilled trades people in the pipeline. When you think about getting new recruits into the trades, it costs money to do that. I mean, it's just not, hey, you on the street, come on in here and work. I mean, it takes money and time to train them properly. Well, everybody here from the developer to every subcontractor to train apprentices, that's an important thing that's crucial to the construction industry. If we don't bring new people into the trades, the skill of our workforce will diminish. So responsible developers, contractors, and subcontractors understand that apprenticeship's the only way to keep them in business for the long haul. This is a super project that help accentuate the point of apprenticeship and bring new people into the trades. And you bring up an excellent point there. We're not talking about just bringing people into the trades and hey, go to work. I mean, it's really bringing them into the apprenticeship program so they can learn from the journey workers, learn from the coursework, learn from the different unions out there how to do it correctly. Exactly, most apprenticeships are four or five years, so this project will be done in a little over a year, but then they'll go on to another project and they may work in another project in the city or they may go to work somewhere else. For me and everybody on this job site, we love it. This is our Disneyland, coming to work every day. And you know, from what I've learned today, it really makes sense. And projects like this, something the community can be proud of. Thanks a lot for coming on. For years, industry and construction and management have felt a gap on how do they reach out to the consumer and the general public to get applicants to come to work for them. WRTP actually found a way to fill that need of, of recruiting people in and upgrading, evaluating, preparing them to enter into the workplace or into an apprenticeship. You don't just show up at a contractor or at the union hall and, and become an apprentice the next day. There's steps you have to take and each craft is different. Ours is you have to take an aptitude test, you take the oral interview, and then you're placed on the rank list and off the rank list you go into apprenticeship. Other trades and crafts have different criteria. WRTP Big Step understands and participates with all those apprenticeship programs and helps steer people in the right direction and prepares them so when they do get up to the place where they're going to apply for apprenticeship, they're ready for that and they know what to anticipate.